What is up my friend, it's Danny, and today I'm gonna to talk about how we can stay young with sauna yeast. Now, before I get started, quick disclaimer, please don't take the content of this video as medical advice. This is for information purposes only, and if you have any concerns or worries about using a sauna, then I would recommend that you speak to a professional before you get started. So, let's move on. So, how do we stay young by using a sauna? Well, as we get older, we all become more susceptible to disease. And disease is unfortunately the number one cause of death in the world, it affects a lot of us. So if we wanna stay young, what we wanna do is we want to stave off this disease for as long as possible, or completely ideally. And we wanna be active and healthy well into our chronological old age with all our cognitive abilities still intact. And so it turns out that a sauna can help us to prevent many of these diseases. And today, there's many kinds of saunas that we can use. There's dry saunas, there's wet saunas, there's infrared saunas. No matter the kind of sauna, I think the underlying goal is, is very similar, and that is to get as much heat as possible, get really, really hot, and sweat, basically. So what diseases can a sauna actually help us to prevent? Well, apparently there's quite a few. There's um, heart disease, there's heart failure, there's atherosclerosis, there's cardiomyopathy, but there's also, um, it can also help us to prevent neurodegenerative diseases as well. So things like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, it can help us to prevent. So how does a sauna actually help us to prevent those diseases? Well, first I need to talk about what actually causes those diseases. Now, there isn't a clear cut answer to that question, but we do know that has been shown that something called protein aggregation is a key player, especially in the cases of the neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. So what is protein aggregation? Well, let me talk about proteins first of all, then I'll talk about protein aggregation. So proteins, we all have them, they're large complex molecules and they play a raft of critical roles in the body and they're required for the, the function, the structure and the regulation of our cells and our tissues and they do most of the work in our cells basically. Now proteins are actually made up of smaller molecules called amino acids and amino acids like to join together to form these long chains. Um, there's 20 amino acids we have that are kind of used in combination to create these proteins. And some proteins are made up of hundreds of amino acids, and some proteins are made up of thousands of amino acids. And it turns out that the sequence of, this amino, of these amino acids will actually determine the protein's ultimate shape and its 3D structure. And a protein's 3D structure is really important because that will determine its specific function in the body. And proteins have many functions. They can act as antibodies, they can act as enzymes, they can act as messengers, as carriers or transporters, and as structural compartments as well. And once a protein has actually done its purpose and served its purpose, or be broken down or degraded and then cleaned away and often replaced by a fresh protein. So you can see that proteins are actually really critical to our health because they run all the, or they do all these functions rather. I like to think of the proteins in our bodies as the soldiers of our bodies because they, they follow the orders, they, they do the work and they get the job done. Now it turns out that when our cells of our bodies are stressed, it actually can actually cause damage to our proteins and it can actually damage that 3D structure. And unfortunately, stress to our cells is part of their everyday life. There is no escaping it, so it's, it's gonna happen. So when these proteins get damaged and they kind of lose their 3D structure, it can actually mess up their function, but also it can impact their ability to be broken down and degraded and cleared away, which is pretty bad. So when that happens, the damaged protein will just hang around for much longer than it should do, and it will start to cluster with other damaged proteins, and these clusters will actually form plaques, and the formation of these damaged protein clusters and plaques is called the protein aggregation. And remember I said that protein aggregation was a key driver when it came to many of those diseases, especially the neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. So that's pretty bad, but the, the good news is we all come with something that helps us to keep our proteins healthy. And that something is called heat shock proteins or HSPs. And heat shock proteins will actually maintain the structure of these proteins and it will actually, actually repair damage to proteins as well. So often they don't actually have to become 
become degraded and broken down. But the good news is as well is when proteins do need to become degraded and broken down, the heat shock proteins will make sure that happens so we don't get this aggregation of proteins, which is really good. So obviously heat shock proteins are great and we all make them. Now the bad news is that as we get older, we make less of these heat shock proteins. And when we're making less of these heat shock, heat shock proteins, we obviously become more susceptible to protein damage and this protein aggregation and ultimately getting these diseases. But what if we could make more heat shock proteins somehow? Well, the good news is again, it turns out that we can actually do that. There's a gene that we can all activate whenever we want to, which will make more heat shock proteins. And we activate that gene by, you guessed it, using a sauna. It's actually the heat stress that will activate this gene to make more heat shock proteins. So when we use the sauna frequently, we actually become something called heat acclimated. And when we become heat acclimated, we learn to cope with the heat stress and we learn to sweat, sweat and sweat very, very fast. Basically, we do it much faster. So I've noticed that when I go to the gym now, I'll start sweating really quickly and that's heat acclimation. And when we're heat acclimated, we actually make more heat shock proteins just under normal temperatures. So when we're going about our everyday lives, we're actually making more of these heat shock proteins and they're repairing damage to damaged proteins and you know, preventing this protein aggregation, which is great. But not only that, when we're, undergo when we're under stressful conditions, we make even more of these heat shock proteins. So you can see that kind of using a sauna is a great way to make more of these heat shock proteins. Now, heat shock proteins has also been linked to longevity in a more general way. Now, it turn turns out that some people have a variation in the gene which results in them making more heat shock proteins just naturally. And this, vi this variation is basically a variation in the DNA sequence and this variation will, will alter the, the, the DNA's ultimate purpose or function. And basically that's called a polymorphism. So people that have a polymorphism that actually make more heat shock proteins, they're more likely to live to be a centenarian and a centenarian is where you live to be 100 or 100 plus. So that's, that's very encouraging. So those are some of the benefits. So let's talk about the sauna itself. So how often should we actually go into the sauna? What's the frequency? Well, luckily we can actually refer to a study to help us answer that question. There has been a recent study that followed 2,000 middle-aged men and they all use the sauna. And the men that use the sauna between two and three times a week, they had a 24% reduction in all-cause mortality, which is really, really great. But not only that, the, the guys that actually used it more, the people that used it between four and seven times a week, they had a 40% reduction in all-cause mortality compared to those that just used it one time a week. So you can see there's a dose-dependent effect, meaning the more times we use a sauna, the more benefit we'll get. So that's, that's I mean, the 40% reduction in all-cause mortality by just going to the sauna, I think is, is pretty, um, pretty encouraging. So that's the frequency. So what about the duration? How long do we need to stay in the sauna? Well, the guide I hear a lot is between 20 and 25 minutes, but that can be pretty tough. It does get very uncomfortable, especially in the last five minutes, you know, you really want to get out. So I recommend building up to it. You know, I started using the sauna probably about eight months ago and I started just doing 15 minutes and I built up to 25, 30 minutes, but it only took about two or three weeks to build up to that. And that was by going about four times a week. So it doesn't take long. Now I do recommend bringing in a book. So I like to bring in a book uh, a, a fictional book that's very easy to read, that'll help. And it takes your mind off the uncomfortableness. And I know how many pages I need to read to kind of get to the end of my 25 minutes so I don't have to keep looking at the clock because that's torture basically. Um, so that will help. But a word of warning, your book will perish. I will show you my book, my sauna book very quickly. So it's kind of, a, you can see it's just kind of fallen apart. And after I've you know, finished it, I, I've lost loads of pages already. So word of warning, you will lose your book, but it, it really helps. Um, so that's, that's the actual frequency. Um, another tip is I like to go into the, the highest platform. So the hottest area of the, the sauna is at the top basically. So if I'm gonna do it, I might as well get as much heat as possible and make more of those heat shock proteins. So that's the frequency. So just so you know, there's actually many more benefits to using a sauna. It's not just the heat shock proteins. And I will talk about those in future videos. Once I've done the videos, I'll put the link probably here or, or here, or maybe here. So if you'd like to see more benefits, just click those links and watch them. So let me do a quick recap to wrap it all up. Um, so how do we stay young by using a sauna? Well, first of all, we want to stave off disease 
for as long as possible or even completely. And the sauna can help us um, stave off a number of diseases. And some of those are heart disease, heart failure, um, atherosclerosis, cardiomyopathy, and then you've got your neurodegenerative diseases as well, so Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So what causes those diseases? Well, a key player is the protein aggregation. What is protein aggregation? That's where these damaged proteins will just kind of hang, a lot, hang around long, longer than they should, should be because they haven't been degraded and they will cluster with other proteins and form these plaques and that drives the disease. But it turns out we all have heat shock proteins that we all make naturally and they can actually help us to repair damage to proteins and prevent this protein aggregation. But the bad news is that as we get older, we make less of these heat shock proteins. But we can cheat, we can activate a gene to actually make more of these heat shock proteins whenever we want to, and we do that with heat stress. And we can do that the easiest way is through the sauna. So how often should we use a sauna? Well, remember the study that followed 2,000 men, and the guys that used it between two and three times a week had a 24% reduction in all-cause mortality, but those that used it between four to seven times a week had a 40% reduction in all-cause mortality. Um, duration, well again, the guide I like to hear a lot is between 20 and 25 minutes, but you can build up to that pretty quickly, it doesn't take long. Um, as a tip, bring a book, it will take your mind off the uncomfortableness and hit in the, sit in the highest uh, area of the sauna to get as much heat as possible. So that is the video, I really hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please hit the like button and if you'd like to see more videos like this one, hit the subscribe button. Plenty more videos about longevity to come, um, crazy hacks out there that you can do which I'll be explaining in the future. Um, so until the next video, please take care.